I've been using a monochrome camera for my astrophotography for a number of months now and it has been a pretty steep learning curve for me, it has to be said. One of the issues I really had in the early days was how you can take the three separate channels that you've taken and make them one colour image that easily aligns in Photoshop. And I figured if I've been struggling, maybe you are too, so it's time to do a video about it. So let's find out how. My name's Matt and this is Everyday Astro. Before we start, let's just take a quick look at the files that we're actually going to be using today. So I've got some data on the Veil Nebula, um, and this is not the correct way of taking data. This is simply for the purposes of this demonstration. So don't take this as a good way to do your astrophotography. Um, but in simple terms, I have three channels for the light frames. So my O3, S2 and HA data. I also have flats. Now, ordinarily you would take flats for each of the channels that you've got because obviously each filter is different and it could have different dust on it. Uh, it requires a different length of flat frame. But again, for the purpose of this, I have one flat frame that I'm using across all three channels. Not a great way to do things, uh, so don't copy that. But I do have the dark flats to go with them uh, and the bias frames that can be used for all of them because they're taken in the dark, so the filter makes no difference whatsoever. So this is the data we're going to use today to put together uh, in Deep Sky Stacker. So if we open that up, the first thing I want to say is if you're used to DSLR or one-shot colour processing, the first thing you're going to need to do is come down to the options down here and under settings click on the raw slash fits settings. And when that opens up, go to the fits files tab. Now if you've been using one-shot colour or DSLR, this box here will be ticked and it is looking therefore for the Bayer matrix for your particular camera. With a mono camera you don't have a Bayer matrix so this needs to be turned off and then you can apply that and go through. Now obviously that will work for your monochrome now but if you do ever go back to doing any one-shot colour processing you need to re-tick that box again. So think of that as a toggle switch between off is for monochrome, on is for one-shot colour. It's the easiest way to remember. But once you've done that it is almost the same as any other stacking that you do within DSS. So if, for example, if we just start with the sulfur data and bring that in as my light frames, um, I'm also into this going to add the calibration frames. So if we start with the bias and bring those in and then the flat frames. And finally, the dark flat frames. Okay, so that brings all of the frames that we want into this. Now, obviously, all we've brought in so far, though, is the S2. Now, the mistake I made was originally to start doing these as separate stacks. So I, I would stack the S2 in this way, I would then stack the HA, and then I would stack the O3 separately. Uh, and that is what caused a lot of my problems. Uh, and it can still go wrong even if you do it correctly in DSS, so hence I'm going to cover this. But I'd never known about the, the groups down the bottom. So the trick to doing this starts with using these groups. So I can up, open up a second group and I can go back to my light information and put in my HA data as light frames as well. Obviously if I had flats for this particular filter as well, I would put the flats into there as well and the dark flats that went with that. As it is, I only have, say there's one set of flats, so they're going to stay in the main group. So I now have my S2 and calibration frames in the main group. I have my HA in group one, and in group two, I'm going to put the O3 data. So I select those and bring those in. So I now have a total of 51 light frames, 100 flats, 100 darks, and 100 bias, but it is split over three groups. And that's kind of the key for this one. So the first thing you do is gonna be the, the, the normal buttons you would click. So we're going to, to register all of those checked pictures. But the box you need to untick is stack after registering. We don't want them to stack them at this given point. So uncheck that box before we go any further. And then what we'll do after that is we will then click go so that these start uh, going and it will start to uh, register all of those pictures. And the key for this is it will then give me a score for all of my images at the end of this. So this will now run through, it'll take a little bit of time. Um, so what I'm gonna do is by the magic of photo editing, I am gonna come back when 
all of the scores are in. Well, there's 20 minutes of my life I'm not going to get back, but thankfully you didn't have to sit through it. The key now, as you can see on screen, is that we have a score for all of our light frames. So for my S2s, you, you can see the scores there range from 1721 down to 1495. And again, we have some scores for the HA and the uh, O3 as well. Now, I'm not going to pretend to care how the, the scores are calculated. The simple thing is the higher the number, the better the quality of the image according to DSS. So this is the bit that is now really key. And it was a bit I was missing for so long. I want to make a reference frame against which all of these will be stacked. And I'm simply gonna do that by selecting the highest scored frame out of any of my images, which in my case is in 03, and it's this particular image here. So I'm going to select that image, right click, and use as reference frame. So that, that is the key moment. This asterisk here is the key moment for everything you need to know when you are stacking these. So to move on to the next bit, I am literally going to uncheck everything. Uh, I am going to just recheck the uh, light frames for my S2, because they're still going to be stacked separately. And the other thing I'm going to do, and I genuinely don't know if you need to do it this way, is I am going to bring in the master frames. So we now have obviously from the from the region we have a master offset or bias. So I am going to bring that in as a bias frame. It might do this automatically, I don't know, but to be honest with you, for the five seconds it takes me to, to do this for uh, these, I just find it is just so much easier to bring them in. It gives me a bit of peace of mind that this part has then been done. Uh, so last one, bring the flat in as well and I'll just show you what that does that adds the master frames to the bottom and so they are now selected so I have one flat frame one dark flat and one bias frame selected which are these ones here which is the master uh, of each of those and the 17 light frames and I also have selected that reference frame so whatever I do in this session now that is going to be the reference frame so at that point you just continue as normal it is stacking your images so I'm going to set that one off to stack. And what I want to do is just take 30 seconds while that's doing that to show you what happens if um, it if you don't do this, basically. So this was the issue that I was having. So this is, in order, is my SHO uh, images. So this is my sulfur image here. Uh, this is my hydrogen image. And this is my oxygen three image. So as you can see, three absolutely fine images. But when I bring them together, these, you know, it looks initially, it looks great, and then you suddenly notice all these, these, these colours are all over the place. And these, these stars here are a great example. So you've got the double here, the double here, and the double here. Well, they should all be lined up, as, as should these three bits here. And what also worries me is whilst the green and red look like they're at roughly the same angle, the blue looks to be at a slightly shallower angle. So what you can do at this point is start going, OK, well, I just need to move everything around. You know, all I need to do is just line these back on top of each other again, um, which, you know, obviously is, is perfectly easy to do. The only thing I've found with that is that when you start looking at the place of the image, if the, ro the angle of rotation isn't right, then you start getting lots of odd colours in other parts of your image. So they're just, they're just not aligning perfectly. And my field flatten is not flattening right either, but uh, that's a... Uh, a whole different story. So you may have brought the, the, those three into alignment, but it's not quite right. Uh, so you could spend hours playing around with it and uh, and trying to see what um, is actually causing that problem. But you know, it, it, to me, it's just a very very frustrating way to do it. So I so the easiest way is to do it as we've just done here. So have that reference frame, which is always there. And then this is now going to compute the last part. We now have a single frame, which just looks black, which is absolutely fine. I'm, I'm not too fussed about that at this stage. Um, but that is now a sorted image uh, and it has a reference frame. And what I can do is I can go back to the, the, the files and I can unselect all of my light frames from here. 
to uncheck those. And now I'm going to say I've left the three masters selected um, and I'm going to go into the HA. I'm going to check all of those. And again, still using this reference frame here, I am going to stack those images and set that one off as well. So I will have a S2 and a HA that have used the same reference frame in order to align it to each other. So it should take away the problem that I've had. So that's everything I really wanted to cover in this video. So this is how we're going to create those three images. So this is how you do things that slightly different way in DSS. And then what we'll do is in the next video, we'll have a look at what that does in Photoshop, how you can bring those together. And we'll just do some very quick editing to see what the images come out like uh, and whether they are actually aligned. Um, and then this will should make a really key difference to us. So I'm going to focus on getting this finished and stacked and I will see you in the next video. Until then, let's guys.